Chippendales wasn't just pecks and mullets and G-strings stuffed with dollar bills. It was a sordid world of greed, arsons, hired hitmen, a years-long FBI manhunt, and a feud that would leave two business partners dead. But the show just went on. In the 1980s, the male exotic dancers of Chippendales were everywhere, from calendars to daytime TV. This is how the story, uh, this is the story, I should say, of how two men transformed a seedy nightclub in Los Angeles into a global phenomenon, but it's also a hotbed for drugs, corruption, and murder. And it's all explained in the podcast, Welcome to Your Fantasy. Natalia Petrozella is the host of the podcast, and she joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. I've been, I've been so I've been reading a little bit about this, and I don't remember hearing any of this in the news or the newspapers. Was it out there and we just forgot, or was this somehow under the radar for everybody? The criminality was definitely out there at the time. I mean, when the founder of Chippendale, Steve Banerjee, puts out a successful hit on his partner, it made headlines. Um, I will say it was out there, but it wasn't out there enough that it affected the popularity of the show. So I totally understand how you might have forgotten or it even didn't pass mm. your radar back then. So it's also interesting that there's the, the guy, talk about the guys who came up with this concept and how it all started, because I think most people don't know that. Yeah, so Chippendales, the, you know, take it off, male exotic dance review for women. It started in 1979 in this kind of dive bar in West Los Angeles. And the founder was this guy named Steve Banerjee, an immigrant from India. And he was kind of trying everything to get on the L.A. nightclub scene. So there was, you know, women's mud wrestling, backgammon, disco lessons. And on one night, this male strip show. That proved the most popular night of the week. And so in the next couple of years, he linked up with Nick DeNoia, this New York City Emmy Award winning kids TV producer who came and like really made it a show. And then that kind of set off it becoming this big 1980s mass culture phenomenon. So it seems like uh, they could just sit back and cash in. Why did it seem like there was all this backstabbing and uh, why did that go off the rails? Yeah, so they did cash in, both of them, but um, what ended up happening is that as the show got bigger and bigger and more popular, and not just as a nightclub act, I mean, these guys had calendars and, you know, um, they were on every daytime t TV talk show, they were on sitcoms, I mean, it was a really big deal, but one of the things that happened is that Nick DeNoia, this guy who brought in and kind of professionalized it as a show, he sort of became the face of Chippendales, like he was on Donahue, he was on Sally Jesse Raphael. He was once referred to as like Mr. Chippendale in one of these media hits. And so Banerjee, who was a very different kind of figure and more in the background, I think he both really resented that publicity and also the fact that the way that they had divided the profits, literally on a cocktail napkin, the touring show, which hadn't been a big deal at all earlier on in terms of bringing in income, becomes very profitable and he's basically getting none of it. So all of that kind of escalates attention that be that resulted in murder. There's also a tangent as to how Chippendales got their look and it ties into Dorothy Stratton, the playmate who was murdered by her boyfriend. Talk about that angle. Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of commonly known, and I think we would often think Chippendales is like Playboy Club for women. And yes, the cuffs and the collars, but one of the things that we found in our research was that that actually, as long as, at least as Chippendales lore has it, was a real connection between Playboy and Chippendales. And that connection was that Dorothy Stratton, this playmate who you mentioned, her husband, Paul Snyder, actually was apparently the guy who came up with the idea of a male strip show. He had seen actually a gay male exotic dance review and said, we should try this for women. He was the first MC of the show. And as word has it, and all of these people are no longer with us. So, you know, as word has it, she was the one who got the approval from Hugh Hefner to be able to do um, the cuffs and collars. And she, Snyder murdered her and killed himself. So they both came to a really sad end. But yeah, there's an actual connection there. Wow. So, so what is the status of Chippendales? 
It's around. I mean, you can. I went to a show in 2019, to oh. the traveling show. I went in Long Island. They have a show in Las Vegas, which the pandemic prevented me from attending. I will say it's very different from the early days. I have watched hours of the original Chippendales footage. Um, but I think, you know, women still go and have a great time, and they have all different kinds of celebrity headliners. And it's much more of a professionalized show now. The dancers I interviewed who now perform with Chippendales, they just got off tour with, like, B Beyonce, like these are professional dancers and this is another gig. It's very different from the early days when these guys, the idea of taking your clothes off for women in a nightclub was not yet a professional identity too many people had. Well, well it's fascinating. It's Welcome to Your Fantasy, available exclusively on Spotify. And for more information, you can check out nataliapetrozella.com. And the spelling is on your screen because I know I'm going to yeah, screw that common up. Common spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much.